Welcome to the DLR webcast. I think the most critical point um, for the development of remote sensing is that we're going to have a clear commitment from uh, national governmental organizations and from European Union responsibilities. Um, my opinion is that uh, regarding remote sensing we are what is often quoted in front of a commercialization. Um, that is the case if we consider uh, governmental organi organizations as customers. And they have to address the need for remote sensing data. So because remote sensing data is the only source which provides um, spatial and timely precise information on the development of the planet as a whole. And that is the key, that is the key point. And so the, um, the assumption that it will be a consumer market will not be true. So we need the governments, they need to raise the money for the long-term programs, the data have to be provided as much as possible free of charge, and then the industrial sector can start with these data and develop products, services, and ideas, and innovation. And I'm pretty sure that's, that's going to happen. If we, if we expect the industry uh, to independently come up with remote sensing missions, that is rather impossible uh, because uh, without the security or safety sector that cannot be the investments cannot be cannot be um, turned into positive uh, income and uh, that is a key issue I think. I think um, we have um, a diversity of challenges in remote sensing and earth observation. The first thing is um, there are so many, still so many groups looking at their own technology, at their own expertise. So there's a SAR group, a radar group, there's a hyperspectral group in optical remote sensing, there might be a LIDAR group, there might be other groups that work with models. The key issue is now to combine all these different sources in a way that at the end an information layer is produced that can be used by the customer. And the customer as such is not only a scientist, it is a governmental organization, it is um, someone who has no idea about the technology of remote sensing. So we have to merge all the different um, streams of data in, and, and translate it into an information product that can be used and understood. Um, the th second thing is that we have a huge development uh, regarding the technology in space. If you look, for example, at the development of radar satellites in the past years, um, from Envisat European Fantastic Sensor now to the German Terrasa X tandem missions, this is a magnitude of difference in terms of quality radiometry resolution in 10 years. And so the information technology on Earth, the crown segment um, processing capacity, has hard to follow these technological developments in space. So we have to be faster, we have to make sure that we um, provide both data in near real time and for long-term time series. This means that we have to translate the data directly after reception um, as soon as possible and make sure that the information layer that is needed will be provided as, as soon as possible to the end customer. So first of all, um, I have to say that uh, the day, um, I think it was March 11 in 2011, that was a day where I had a vacation. So I was at home and I turned on television in the morning and was immediately victim of this incredible tsunami wave. And this as uh, a person who was involved in the creation of the uh, tsunami early warning system uh, for Indonesia, which was launched after the uh, disaster in 2004, 
um, funded by uh, the German Research Ministry. Um, to see the extreme power of the wave, uh, how it destroys in minutes uh, villages, towns, uh, destroys uh, goods and, and lives, uh, was uh, incredible. Uh, kind of shocky, kind of touchy, I, hard to describe. Anyway, from our point of view, Earth observation, the first hours count. So we have to make sure that we receive satellite data um, as soon as possible after such an event. And uh, typically, um, it is data of high spatial resolution, coming from optical instruments, coming from radar instruments. The advantage of radar instruments is that we are independent on cloud coverage. Um, so if we task our satellite Tandem X or Terrasa X, we are 100% sure that we're going to have an image. On the other hand, the details uh, coming from roads, houses, debris, is in some cases better in optical data. So we need optical data as well for these uh, mapping activities. Then we are depending on cloud coverage. So what we do is we task, we, we are in contact with all the international networks, commercial providers, European providers, um, governmental organizations, uh, gather the data, uh, bring it into our Center for Satellite-Based Crisis Information and then geoscience sit in front of the data and try to do the analysis. And um, the analysis is um, first of all to discriminate areas that are destroyed and those that are uh, in a good condition. This is critical information for relief organizations like um, technical um, uh, groups from Germany or Red Cross or other organizations. Um, so the information layer itself is some sort of map product and the legend and the information itself has been discussed in advance with these organizations. This is important because when they receive those maps, they can immediately work with it. Uh, if, they should, if, if they had to first um, orient and try to interpret what's going on in these, in these products, we wouldn't be successful. So um, they, they, they receive a product that can be immediately uh, used. Okay, of course, it's <clears throat> for us at DLR and in Germany in general, we're in a very comfortable situation these days as we have own satellite resources of outstanding quality. Uh, Tandem X and Terrasa X are two flagship satellites um, which we have under control, of course, then can be tasked. Task means we can send a command to the satellite and tell him at which area to look at when it overflies next time, let's say, Asia. And this is critical to receive the data as soon as possible um, after an event like uh, the tsunami in Japan. So this is done by the German Space Operations Center. Um, then, when they have tasked the satellite, um, the data is coming to the crown segment, which is uh, operated at the German Remote Sensing Data Center, also in DLR. And then the data stream is um, um, transferred into readable information for the geoscientists. And of course, it was critical because um, critical information because in radar imagery, you can detect flooded areas very easily relatively easily. Of course, there are some problems with the debris in the water, but in the case of um, an optimal scenario where you have a flooded area, you can discriminate the water and the, the non-flooded areas very precisely. And this is the key information the radar satellites provide. So we were able to directly um, produce information layers showing uh, the amount of water coming into the inland areas and which area has been flooded and which not. And this is the first critical information. Thank you. This was a DLR webcast.